Hi there, this is Dr. Alan Snow. I'm the CEO and founder of Cognitive Clarity Incorporated. We make the Percepta products, and today I'm going to talk about Percepta specifically, which is our first product. It's been on the market for about a year. And Percepta targets brain plaques tangles. And um, we discovered it many years ago. We have about 10 years of research and over 50 issued patents on this product. It is made up of two main ingredients. One of them is cat's claw bark powder. Comes out of the Amazon rainforest. And this is actually the bark coming off the tree. And then we make it, we extract it into a bark powder. And this is one of the main ingredients in Percepta. And so we have cat's claw, Uncaria tomentosa, and the second ingredient is memory tea, which is a specific oolong tea extract that we um, get from the Guanyin Mountains of China. And these two ingredients have potent polyphenols in there and proanthocyanidins, which are epicatechin dimers uh, that we discovered in the cat's claw ingredient. And today I'm going to talk about Percepta and the science behind Percepta and how we discovered that this works, has potent activity against brain plaques and tangles in the normal aging brain. So I'll talk to you later. Thanks. Hi, this is Dr. Alan Snow again. Today we're going to talk about the science behind the aging brain breakthrough supplement that we developed called Percepta. A little bit about me, um, I've been working in Alzheimer's disease and drug development, looking at brain plaque and tangle formation for over 30 years now. I have a PhD in pathology from Queen's University in Canada, where I worked on the role of proteoglycans and glycosaminoglycans in the pathogenesis of amyloidosis. This was in the lab of Dr. Robert Kieselewski at Queen's University in Canada. I did a postdoc at University of Washington in Dr. Tom White's lab. I was looking at proteoglycans and discovered heparin sulfate proteoglycans in Alzheimer's disease in papers that were published in 1998, sorry, 1988 and 1992. I worked 14 years as a research associate professor of pathology at University of Washington and 10 years as a project leader at the University of Washington Alzheimer's Disease Research Center. I founded a company in 1999 and I left the university. And then I worked 17 years at this private company where we were developing small molecule drugs for Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease. I have 18 National Institute of Health Small Business Innovative Grant Awards. I was the principal investigator on a $3.5 million LEAPS award from the Michael J. Fox Foundation for Parkinson's Disease Research. There we were developing a small molecule drug against alpha-synuclein, which is the main protein that accumulates in Lewy bodies in the brains of people who have Parkinson's disease. I'm also an inventor on 342-plus issued patents pertaining to drug development, nutraceutical, compositions of matter, methods of use, and screening technologies. So I'd like to talk a little bit about what happens to your brain as you age and what is the real reason we lose memory as we age. Starting in your mid-20s, research now confirms that in normal brain aging, there's the accumulation in the brain of two major neurotoxic proteins. One is called the beta amyloid protein, and this forms between neurons and creates these meatball-like aggregates that are known as plaques. And you can see them here on the left in various pictures. This is, a, this is an image of the brain under a microscope in the cortex. You see these large brown blobs that are amyloid plaques. Plaques in the brain block connections between neurons so that they can't communicate as well and with each other, and that actually contributes to memory loss. The second target and reason we lose memory as we age is tangles. Tangles are these black little blobs over here, and basically a protein called tau protein forms spaghetti-like strands inside neurons, and these are called tangles, and tangles also cause neurons to die as well. So the two major reasons we lose memory as we age is the accumulation of brain plaques and tangles. The third major 
thing that goes wrong is neural inflammation, which is inflammation in the brain. So together with plaques and tangles, uh, we refer to it as PTI, plaques, tangles, and inflammation. Those are, that is the trilogy of memory loss. And if you have neural inflammation along with plaques and tangles, then you're going to, it leads to accelerated memory loss. Some people can live a long life without any clinical symptoms of memory loss, and they have lots of plaques and tangles in their brain. But it was found out in the last few years that they don't have any signs of neuroinflammation. So that's what's keeping the accelerated memory loss from occurring. Once the inflammation in the brain occurs, they will get severe or accelerated memory loss. So my partner, Dr. Rudy Tanzi, um, at Massachusetts General Hospital and Harvard University, showed in two breakthrough papers that plaques come first and then tangles come um, after. And this has been confirmed by a variety of labs. Here he showed in two papers, one in Nature in 2014, one in Nature Neuroscience in 2018, coming out of his labs, that using uh, neurons uh, putting into culture, and they call it organoids, it's done on a matrigel matrix of components, uh, usually extracellular matrix, when they put in these mutations, familial mutations, into the neurons, and then they put it on the matrix called matrigel, they start seeing plaque formation. As you see here on the left, this little blob here is a plaque in yellow, and it starts accumulating in a few weeks. And later on, they found that tangles follow the plaque development. So plaques come first, tangles come second. If you stop plaque formation, then the tangles will not form. And then in the uh, additional paper in 2018, they showed that they could put microglia in. So the microglia are all these little orange dots here in the organoid culture that the microglia are actually releasing inflammatory cytokines like interleukin-1, TNF-alpha that make the brain worse and also lead to neuronal death, death. So microglia, which are thought to be some of the friendly Um, cell types that are supposed to clean up the mess of the accumulation of beta amyloid and tau and plaques and tangles, it turns out that they're actually contributing to neuronal cell death. And what he saw in these studies that there was a 20% increase in neuronal cell death. So again, it's plaques, tangles, and inflammation. So in the early 2000s, when I was at University of Washington, um, we developed a screening tool to identify inhibitors of beta amyloid plaques. And we used a proprietary assay in which we put beta amyloid on a column. And this was like a fishing hook. And we actually started searching for natural inhibitors of beta amyloid protein. And this is like putting through a stream of ingredients to see if anything can be caught that interacted with the beta amyloid protein uh, plaque fibrils. We tested about 50 nutraceuticals and dietary supplements. And quite by surprise, we identified a new potential inhibitor of brain plaques. And this turned out to be cat's claw or uncaryotomatosa, which I never heard of in the beginning. And it turns out to be a woody vine that grows 200 feet in the Amazon rainforest. Um, Although there are 34 species of Uncaria, um, Uncaria tomatosa was the one that we found to be the potent inhibitor. And we worked with New Zealand Crop and Food Research, Department of Chemistry out of the University of Otago in Dundee, New Zealand, to identify what the components were in cat's claw that was uh, contributing to this binding interaction and inhibition. I We finally published a paper that consisted of 10 years of research from eight different institutions, including Cognitive Clarity Incorporated Research Labs, where I am now. This was published on February 6, 2019 in Scientific Reports, which is a nature journal. And what it shows is that a specific cat's claw that we were using that comes out of the Amazon rainforest in Peru had potent activity in inhibiting and reducing both plaques and tangles. 
And also we found out that in animal model studies, transgenic animal models, which were plaque producing, there was a marked decrease reduction of brain inflammation. Both astrocytosis and microgliosis went way down. So it's also important to know that the two ingredients in Percepta are now patented ingredients, PTI 00703 cat's claw in a specific oolong tea called Memer tea. So this paper talks a lot about the science behind the product, and I'm going to uh, go through some of the research um, results that we found. So Uncaria tomatosa, or cat's claw, is a woody vine, grows up to 200 feet in the Amazon rainforest. This is both in Brazil and Peru. Um, it was found in the late 1980s by Keplinger that uh, it does have a lot of oxindole alkaloids, and it has potent antioxidant properties as well. Uh, Keplinger in the late 1980s had a few patents, and he showed that it played a role in enhancement of the immune system. In the early 2000s, we found that the bark of the cat's claw also contains ingredients that have potent plaque and tangle inhibitory and dissolving activity. And we spent 29,000 hours of documented scientific research to identify the components in cat's claw and we had patents on their use for brain health, cognition, and memory. In fact, we were the ones holding all the patents for the last 20 years on the role of cat's claw for cognition, memory, uh, concentration, and executive function. As I said before, most commercial preparations of cat's claw con contain the plant species uh, tomentosa, although there are 34 other known species of cat's claw. Um, and it has alkaloids in it, including mitrophilin, rhicophilin, and isorhicophilin. We actually found out later on in our studies that when we had isolates of all three alkaloids, they had no activity on inhibition and reduction of brain plaques and tangles. So pertaining to the discovery of our specific cat's claw that we call PTI 00703 cat's claw, we tested over 15 different sources of cat's claw coming out of different manufacturers across the world. And we found that PTI 00703 cat's claw has the most robust activity against brain plaques and tangles. I'm currently submitting a paper uh, for publication in which we have all this data where we compared um, our cat's claw to other cat's claw. And we could show that our cat's claw has the most robust activity anywhere from 30% to 85% more activity against brain plaques and tangles than any other cat's claw that's made. And note that when we take the cat's claw, it's coming from the bark. So it's a cat's claw bark. And the woody vine grows back rapidly. So we're not pillaging the rainforest. The woody vine actually grows back to its full length in about one to two years. So the question is, all, are all cat's claws the same? And the answer is no, they are not. Our research team has found that when we compare different sources of the cat's claw, we see marked differences in activity against brain plaques and tangles. So the source of the cat's claw harvest is, is important. We take the bark. The species is important. We look at Uncaria, Tomentosa, and the region of the world where the cat's claw is harvested from is very important as well, as well as the specific extraction process that we use, which is proprietary. But basically, we're concentrating the polyphenol contents of the cat's claw, and that's really what's working in PTI 00703 cat's claw, which is the main ingredient found in Percepta. So the first ingredient behind Percepta is PTI 00703 cat's claw. It's obtained about one to two miles directly into the Amazon rainforest in Peru. And we spent over 15 years of studies to identify and look at the effects of the key polyphenol ingredients in cat's claw that are responsible for the potent plaque and tangle inhibitory and reducing activity. 
Here on the left, you could actually see the, the vine of the tree, and it's called cat's claw because it has hook-like thorns that are grown on the uh, leaves of the tree. And near the bottom of the tree, that's where the bark is obtained. So you could actually obtain bark bundles shown here on the left, and then you uh, pulverize it into a powder, and that's what's known as the cat's claw bark powder. And this is what it looks like in boxes when it comes in and is at our warehouses in the United States. So looking at some of the data, what does PTI 00703 cat's claw do? Well, the first thing we found out that it inhibits beta amyloid plaque fibril formation. So we did a number of studies in which if you take beta amyloid 1 to 40, which does not form fibrils right away like 1 to 42, if you grow it up at 37 degrees, at one day you see by thioflavin T fluorometry, which is a quantitation of amyloid fibrils formed, that it zips right up from almost zero up to about 3,700 fluorescent units. In the presence of uh, different dosages of cat's claw, and if you look at 1 to 0.1 or 1 to 1, and that is on a weight-to-weight -weight basis of A beta to the cat's claw, you can see at 1 to 0.1 and 1 to 1, there's actually no formation of amyloid fibrils. And this is uh, confirmed by thioflavin S fluorescence. On the left, you see amyloid fibrils. These, these are dropped onto a slide and then stained with the, uh, with the dye thioflavin S. And thioflavin S only uh, binds and shows green fluorescence when there are amyloid fibrils present. In the presence of PTI-703 cat's claw, you'll see that there's no green birefringence, suggesting that the cat's claw is stopping the formation of amyloid fibrils. An electron microscopy on magnification of 30,000, you can see massive amyloid fibrils here that are formed after one day of taking beta amyloid 1 to 40 and growing it up at 37 degrees. In the presence of PTI-703 cat's claw, as shown here in E, you can see that it stops the formation. You don't see any amyloid fibrils or just amorphous material at the electron microscopic level, which is about 30,000 magnification. The other thing that cat's claw does that we found is that if you actually have plaque fibrils that form instantly with A beta 1 to 42, so if you look here at day zero, beta amyloid 1 to 42 actually forms plaque fibrils, and you can pick it up by thioflavin T fluorometry. Here we sh see it shoots up right away over 2,500 fluorescent units. And what we find is that as you add the cat's claw in a dose-dependent manner, going from 1 to 0 0.001 uh, weight to weight, down to 1 to 1 weight to weight, that there's a dose-dependent disruption or disaggregation of the amyloid fibrils in the presence of PTI-703 cat's claw. And this is shown... Um, almost instantly when the two are mixed together. So on the left, we have A beta 1 to 42 only. That's picked up by Congo red staining, which is a marker for amyloid fibrils. You see a red-green birefringence under polarized light. And in the presence of cat's claw, you'll see that you lose that red-green birefringence, suggesting that the cat's claw is breaking apart the amyloid fibrils and they don't form fibrils anymore. This is also shown by thioflavin S fluorescence, where on the left you have positive green fluorescence showing amyloid fibrils. On the right, in the presence of PTI-703 cat's claw, you do not see green fluorescence, again showing loss of fibrils. And by electron microscopy, you could visualize the amyloid fibrils at a 30,000 magnification. In the presence of PTI-703 cat's claw, you could see that we can completely dissolve these fibrils. And this occurs almost instantly, which again is an amazing finding. <clears throat> the other thing that we found is that we were one of the first laboratories to actually form paired helical filaments, which are in tangles, seen in the aging brain. And the way we did this is uh, to take the tau 4 repeat domain we made it recombinantly, and in the presence of heparin, which is a highly sulfate glycosaminoglycan, within a few days you actually form paired helical filaments 
shown here in C and then in D as a massive complex. These are all twisting filaments that contain the tau protein. And this is exactly what you see uh, in the brain of people um, as they age and accumulate tangles. So the effects of cat's claw on tangles was quite amazing in that it not only inhibited tangle formation, but once the tangles were there, it actually causes disruption. And so in H here, you see that these are tangles seen by electron microscopy. As you add increasing dosages of PTI-703 cat's claw, we see that the tangles start to disappear and it's forming amorphous material. We actually identified the mechanism of action of how this works. The cat's claw actually comes in and by circular dichrosin spectroscopy, it reduces, markedly reduces the beta sheet secondary folding of the tangles, and it does so in a dose-dependent manner. So as shown here as the black line with this curve that goes all the way down to 218 uh, nanometer, it actually, this black line is a characteristic curve for beta sheet secondary structure. As you add increasing dosages of the cat's claw, you can see that the line starts to flatten out until you see this uh, red line where there's a complete loss of beta sheet secondary folding. And what we think is happening here is that the polyphenol groups, which are have adjacent hydroxyls uh, in the actual uh, cat's claw, these are proanthocyanins, epicatechin dimers, that have a specific spacing of the OH groups on the aromatic rings. When they bind to the beta amyloid fibrils or the tau fibrils, they actually do so in such a way that they could form a wedge and get into the beta sheet and actually cause it to fall apart. And this is exactly what you're seeing both by electron microscopy and by CD spectroscopy in, in H and G in this slide. When we started looking at PTI-703 effects, we went into transgenic plaque-producing mice. These mice, as they age, get plaques in the brain. Here we could show in A, all these brown dots are the accumulation of beta amyloid plaques, both in the cortex and in the hippocampus. Uh, the hippocampus is shown as this horseshoe-shaped structure, and this is looking at brain tissue sections. In the first experiment, we actually just used stereotaxic infusion using alzot pump, which was over on, um, on the side here. You don't actually see the pump going into the brain. But what we found is that within 14 days, by direct infusion, there was a marked reduction of amyloid plaques in both the cortex and the hippocampus which was quite amazing. It was a 59% reduction of plaque load, so we quantitated it, and a 78% reduction of plaque number. So the plaque load goes from 2.03% uh, in the brain down to 0.8%, a 59% decrease, and the plaque number goes from 11.6 plaques per square millimeter down to 2.52, 78% reduction and the presence with the cat's claw ingredients. We also found in uh, three-month uh, treatment studies, uh, again, that the cat's claw and the main co constituent in the cat's claw, which is a proanthocyanin B2, can markedly reduce the brain plaque load and markedly improve short-term memory in these TS, TASD41 transgenic mice. Now, these transgenic mice have both the London and Swedish mutation, and basically they accelerate amyloid plaque formation in the brain in mice. And as you see in A and B here, there's a lot of plaque formation in the brains of these two different mice. And then in the presence of three months of treatment, we show a marked reduction of the amyloid plaque load in the brain. And the reduction goes down around 60% in a three-month period. What we also saw is that when you reduce plaque load with the cat's claw, you actually show a marked improvement in memory by about 58% in a three-month period. Uh, this is measured by Morris Watermay's testing, which is the gold standard for hippocampus-dependent memory and spatial acquisition. 
Basically, we measure the distance that it takes the mouse once it's uh, taught how to find a hidden platform. So it goes through a training stage and then they pull away the platform and then the mouse is supposed to remember where the platform used to be. So what you see is that a non-transgenic mouse that does not have plaques in the brain, it takes them 2.5 meters to find the platform. So it's very quick. An another uh, mouse that has plaques in the brain, as in shown in A and B, it takes it much longer to find the platform because it's starting to lose its memory. It has, it takes it 6.79 meters to find the platform. And then the length of time to get there is also quantitative and takes much longer to find it. After three months of treatment with the main ingredient PTI-00703 cat's claw, as we're reducing the plaque load in the brain, the memory is improving. So here we see that the ones that have been treated for three months show about a 58% improvement in short-term memory, and it takes them only 2.87 meters to find the platform. It's almost getting back to normal. And we're going into very old animals that have about a lot of plaques in their brain. So we are able to both reduce the plaque load and improve memory in the presence of PTI-703 cat's claws, main ingredients. The other thing we see is a marked reduction in both astrocytosis and microgliosis following three months of treatment with the main ingredient PTI-703 cat's claw. Um, astrocytosis, which is lit up here with a antibody against GFAP, glial fibrillar acidic protein, which is the main marker for astrocytes. Here you can see in the saline treated animals, there's marked accumulation of astrocytosis. Following treatment with the PTI-703 cat's claw ingredients, there's a marked reduction. It's about 69% reduction. Also, microgliosis goes way down in the presence of the cat's claw ingredients by 80.3% over a three month period. So this is quite amazing results, and here we show that by reducing plaque load in the brain, you're also seeing a marked improvement in memory and a marked reduction in both astrocytosis and microgliosis. So the second ingredient that's found in Percepta is a specific oolong tea extract that we call memor tea. And memory tea also has potent plaque and tangle inhibitory activity. And, you know, we did a lot of research at CCI Research Labs on site, and we found this uh, plant, and then we started comparing it to different ones. And it's interesting that, both, that green tea, black tea, and oolong tea, they all come out of the same plant. Um, so the plant is called Camellia sinensis. And, you know, all these plants contain polyphenols that are very important for the inhibitory activity on both plaques and tangles. So green tea is unfermented or unoxidized. Black tea is fully fermented or fully oxidized. And oolong tea is partially fermented or partially oxidized. What we found, um, and this is in our uh, patents, that the fermentation process actually changes the final polyphenol content of the tea leaves. And the polyphenols in green tea, for instance, ECGC and epicatechin show promise as plaque and tangle inhibitors, and there's a lot of papers on that. So we tested all different types of these teas, and we found that actually a specific oolong tea coming out of the Guanyin Mountains of China has the most potent plaque and tangle inhibitory activity. So we actually have a proprietary supply agreement to get and have the North American rights to this tea that we actually, this, this tea ingredient, this oolong tea that we actually have as the second ingredient in Percepta. So Percepta is the world's first neurotropic to target brain plaques and tangles in the normal aging brain. It's a proprietary blend of patented PTI-703 cat's claw in a specific oolong tea extract called Memor Tea. PTI-703 cat's claw is currently backed by a number of patents in the U.S. and internationally that are owned by Cognitive Clarity Incorporated. We also recently got the U.S. patent that was issued in July 16, 2019 for the composition of matter on the combination of the PTI cat's claw and the oolong tea. And we have a recent June 4, 2019 patent issued on the use of 
uh, both the combination for the treatment of plaques and tangles in mammals um, with that combination. This patented, uh, these new patents give Cognitive Clarity Incorporated a new 20-year exclusivity in the U.S. for this combination. And this is the backbone of all our Percepta products. We also have international patents that are pending for this combination product as well. One thing to note is that all our ingredients and lots of Percepta are rigorously tested at CCI labs and proprietary assays. We look at each ingredient's ability to inhibit it and reduce both brain plaques and tangles and proprietary assays, and this is done in the lab. And once these capsules come off the manufacturing uh, machines at our manufacturer, we also test them again to make sure the activity is retained. And we can tell you that each lot of Percepta has been tested in assays, and we do see continual plaque and tangle inhibitory and reducing activity. Percepta right now is, take, uh, is in a capsule form. We're also working on a tablet form and then working on a beverage as well. It is, uh, you take two capsules once a day with a light meal, um, usually in the morning or in, at lunchtime. Uh, due to, uh, there's a little bit of caffeine in the natural oolong tea extract. It's equivalent to about one third of a cup of coffee. So that's why we suggest taking it uh, breakfast or lunch if you have sensitivity to slight caffeine. Percepta is sold at www.perceptabrain.com and at amazon.com. We are going to start soon. We're going to be starting a monthly subscription membership on our website that's going to offer discounts for our members when they're buying more Percepta for three months, six months, or one year. So this should be coming out in the next few months on our website. So just to show you that when we take Percepta, which is the combination of PTI-703 cat's claw and oolong tea extract, we could show that we could dissolve basically preformed amyloid fibrils near instantly uh, upon combination with beta amyloid protein. So again, here by red staining, we see red-green biofringence. By thioflavin S fluorescence, we see green, green fluorescence. And by electron microscopy, we see a lot of amyloid fibrils that are present. This is done with A beta 1 to 42. In the presence of Percepta, just the two ingredients, we could completely near instantly dissolve and reduce the plaque fibrils that are found. Here we see a marked reduction in red-green biofringence. We lose the green fluorescence shown by thioflavin S. And by electron microscopy, we basically almost dissolve all of the fibrils. And if there's anything left, it doesn't look fibrillar. It looks like amorphous material. So lastly, I just want to talk about my partner, Dr. Rudy Tanzi and I formed Cognitive Clarity in 2015, and then we came out with our products in 2018. Rudy is the Joseph P. and Rose Kennedy Professor of Neurology at Harvard University. He's the Vice Chair of Neurology and Director of the Genetics and Aging Unit and Co-Director of the Henry and Allison McCant Center for Brain Health at Massachusetts General Hospital. He's also the Scientific Chairman of the Cure Alzheimer's Fund he co-discovered the three familial Alzheimer's genes and discovered the AD in a dish model, which is what I showed you some pictures on, that when they introduce microglia and astrocytes into the model, they're mimicking many aspects of the brain, plaques, tangles, and inflammation in the brain. In 2015, he was named Time Magazine Most 100 Influential People in the World, and he also wrote three books with Deepak Chopra, including Super Brain, Super Genes, and most recently, The Healing Self. So to conclude, Percepta is a breakthrough dietary supplement that targets plaques and tangles in the normal aging brain. This is a natural plant extract combination of PTI-703 cat's claw, Uncaria tomatosa, and a specific oolong tea extract called Memory Tea, that was discovered to have potent effects on inhibition and reduction of brain plaques and tangles in the aging brain. 
One of the things I didn't talk about is that in the paper, we actually show blood-brain barrier data demonstrating that the main polyphenols in PTI-703 cat's claw get into the brain in two minutes after being in the blood. So we know that it gets into the brain very quickly. It is most efficient in getting across the blood-brain barrier. And we did a lot of those studies at Louisiana State University in Abacastin's laboratory, which is a blood-brain barrier laboratory. Not all cat's claws are the same, and PTI-703 cat's claws emerge as the predominant cat's claw extract that has the most robust activity against brain plaques and tangles. And this is where we tested against many different manufacturers of cat's claw. And this manuscript has been um, submitted for publication. It's known that cat's claw markedly reduces interleukin-1 and TNF-alpha which are two major inflammatory cytokines and also increases BDNF, brain-derived neurotropic factor, which are all amazing attributes of it. The newly discovered polyphenols in cat's claw, which we talk about in our paper, is specific proanthocytinins, which are epicatechin dimers. And as I showed, they're believed to form a wedge to force the beta sheet secondary structure in amyloid plaques and tangles to fall apart into amorphous material that then are believed to be cleared out by the microglia in the brain. So memory loss is caused by the accumulation of plaques and tangles. Plaques come first, followed by the accumulation of tangles. <clears throat> and neural inflammation is the third target that leads to acceleration of memory problems. For further information about this, please contact me directly. My email address is Dr. Alan Snow at CognitiveClarityInc.com. Here's the address. And for more information about our products, go to www.PerceptiveBrain.com. And it's important to note that these statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration, and this product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. So on that note, I'd like to thank you, and we will conclude on the video coming up. Thank you very much. Hi, this is Dr. Alan Snow again. I hope you enjoyed my seminar going through the science behind Percepta. Again, Percepta contains two exclusive proprietary patented ingredients, PTI-703 cat's claw, derived from the Amazon rainforest, Uncaria tomatosa, and the second one is Memer tea, which is a specific oolong tea extract. This product has been out over a year. We have many testimonials on our website, www. Uh, perceptibrain.com. If you actually press the testimonials tab, you'll see that a lot of people are talking about improvement in memory focus concentration, usually in about two to three weeks. For people who have more severe memory loss, we recommend that you take it for at least three months. And so there's a lot of science behind Percepta. We have exclusive patents on this that just got issued in June and July of 2019 both on the composition of matter, the two ingredients. Thank you very much, and I hope you enjoy taking Percepta. And please contact me at Dr. Dr. Allen, A-L-A-N, Snow, S-N-O-W, at cognitiveclarityinc.com. Thanks a lot.